and Taro Adun, Commander. Our forward base has been established. The foolish Terrans continue to bring their forces to this platform. They will serve only to feed the Zerg Swarm if we do not destroy them quickly. gentlemen, we're now going to show you a demo of StarCraft II. Before we begin today, I'd like to remind everybody this is a demo. This is still work in progress. We've got a lot of balance work ahead of us. Nothing you're going to see here today is final. We're going to begin today with these Protoss Zealots. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft. You can see they're still armed with their powerful Psy Blades and they're still protected by a very tough personal body shield. By your will, Kassad is Templari. In StarCraft II, the Zealots also have a special charge ability. This allows the Zealot to close quickly with his enemies. We stand as one. The Zealot's charge makes him extremely dangerous against ranged defenders like these Marines. Attention, Protoss! This is Admiral Gascaville of the Terran Dominion. You will withdraw immediately, or be annihilated. Terrans are bringing in their siege tanks. This is a classic unit from the original StarCraft, and they're in a classic Terran position, using that high ground against us. They're shelling our zealots from range, forcing our zealots to go the long way around, and you can see... Our infantry are just taking a pounding as they try to approach this Terran position. They just can't withstand all of that heavy Terran firepower. In order to attack a Terran position like this, that's so well defended, we're gonna to need to bring in another new Protoss weapon of war. After the destruction of Ire and the events of Brood War, the Protoss have been forced to adapt. They created these, these are the Immortals. They have a special type of Protoss shield. It's a hardened shield that activates only when the Immortal is struck by a very powerful attack. You can see the hardened shields are activating now, and they're absorbing most of this Terran fire. This makes the Immortal the perfect choice to assault this kind of defended Terran position. Terrans are sending in their Reapers. This infantry unit is armed with two pistols and uses a jump pack to avoid different types of terrain. Their small pistols don't activate the hardened shields of the Immortals. This makes the Reaper the perfect choice for countering these powerful Protoss troops. This kind of fast, bloody raid something the Reapers really excel at. You can see how powerful they can really be hunting down slow-moving units on the field of battle. In addition, the Reapers can use their jump packs to be very effective base raiders. Once enemy forces are inside a Protoss base, one of the first things we'll often go for is our pylons. And with our pylon down, our photon cannons go offline, making us vulnerable to continued attack. Fortunately, we have some new weapons. The Protoss can use the Phase Prism to create a power field anywhere they wish. You can see with our Photon Cannons back online, these Reapers have no choice but to run for cover. In addition to a number of new units, the Protoss also have access to some new mechanics. Protoss can use Warp In to teleport units anywhere they want into pylon power. You can see here we've created some Stalkers. This is a new type of specialist Protoss Dark Dragoon. 
It's not very tough, but it does have a powerful weapon. In addition, it has a special blink ability that allows it to teleport a short distance anywhere it can see. This allows the stalker to avoid certain types of obstacles. And it also makes the stalker very potent at chasing down fleeing enemy forces. Zerg forces detected. Multiple contacts closing in on our position. The Zerg have arrived sooner than we expected. You can see they're using their Nidus swarms here to create a beachhead, sending Zerglings against us. You also notice that we're using our Stalkers here to blink away from these Zerglings. This is an example of how a skilled player can use the Stalker's blink ability to great advantage. Unfortunately, there's simply too many Zerglings for our Stalkers to survive. In order to deal with a Zerg infestation of this magnitude, we're going to need to bring in some additional reinforcements. Now we've shown you how you can use the phase prisms to create a power field anywhere you wish, as well as warp in. These two mechanics can be used together to create a large army anywhere on the battlefield. We are the Blades of Ire. StarCraft is still a game where large armies battle against large armies. Our upgraded zealots can hold the line here for a short time, but in order to really survive against this many Zerglings, we're going to need to bring in some additional firepower. These are the Colossus. They're powerful robotic units that can use their long legs to step up and down cliffs. In addition, they have a powerful beam that sweeps backwards and forwards, able to do large amounts of damage to small swarming units like these Zerglings. This makes the Colossus the ideal support unit for this group of Zealots. have developed many new weapons, the Zerg have continued to evolve. These Zerglings are mutating into Banelings. These small suicidal creatures are filled with explosive chemicals and corrosive acids. Makes the Banelings very potent against zealots that have no defense and even dangerous against the mighty Colossus. You can see our last Colossus here is forced to run, try to get to high ground in order to survive. Colossus is using our new IK system to step up and down this cliff. It's just one example of the new types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft II to make the game more dynamic. Now, while the Colossus is very dangerous against ground targets, it's much more vulnerable to an air counterattack. This swarm of mutalisks will quickly destroy our Colossus and then continue on to attack our base. We'll need to bring in some Phoenix. This is a new Protoss air superiority fighter. It has a special overload ability that allows it to fire its weapon at all nearby enemy forces. Unfortunately, after it overloads, the Phoenix goes offline for a short time. It can't move, it can't fight, and it's helpless against a counterattack. In the hands of a skilled player, 
the Phoenix can be extremely deadly. If you overload at the right time against the right enemies, you may destroy them all, and there will be no one left to take advantage of your temporary weakness. Time for battle. Understood. done a lot of work on our terrain here in StarCraft II. We've got our space platform here, and you can see we've also got a lot of great doodads in this environment, some wonderful texture work. You notice we've got a planet there in our deep sky in the background. There's some asteroids floating in the distance. This is just one example of the types of environments we want to create for StarCraft II. For honor on the wings of justice, Phoenix are very powerful against small flyers like Mutalisks. They're much more vulnerable to heavily armed and armored targets like these battle cruisers. They just don't have the firepower to cut through that thick Terran armor. In order to deal with a battle cruiser squadron of this size, we'll need to bring in our warp rays. Warp Ray is a specialist Protoss flyer that does additional damage the longer it fires at a single target. This makes the Warp Ray very potent against heavily armored targets. Same thing that makes the warp ray powerful against battle cruisers also makes it very powerful against enemy structures. You can see this barracks is taking loads of damage and will try to lift off to escape, but it's just not fast enough to get away from the warp ray. All right, you alien freaks. You made your choice. Now you're gonna pay the price. The warp rays are very vulnerable to small units. You can see these marines are coming in and the warp ray is just wasting way too much of his damage firing at a single target. Makes the marines a strong counter for the warp ray. You notice our physics system is in action there. As these warp rays die, their pieces fall down and slide down the ramp a little bit. It's just another example of the types of technologies we're adding to StarCraft II. Now, with our warp rays destroyed, it looks like the Terrans are going to fortify their position here against us. As we approach the end of our demo here today, there is one last unit we'd like to show you. Now our foes will feel the power of the Protoss. This is the Protoss mothership. It is the ultimate weapon of war in the Protoss arsenal. You are only allowed a single mothership at one time. And each mothership costs a significant number of resources to bring to the field of battle. The mothership has several special abilities that can really make her worth the expense. First of these is the time bomb. This is a special ability that slows down all enemy movement inside the field. You can actually see the missiles slowing down as they try to strike the mothership and stopping just before they strike home. When the field goes off, the missiles fall harmlessly to the ground. This makes the mothership extremely potent against fixed base defenses like these missile turrets. In addition to her time bomb ability, the mothership also has a special attack that she can employ against ground targets. This is the planet cracker. Ordinarily, this would expose your mothership to significant enemy fire. But as you can see, these marines simply don't have the firepower to punch through that thick Protoss shield. 
Since you're only allowed a single mothership, she's usually a very high priority target for the enemy. When you bring your mothership out, you can expect the enemy to throw everything they've got in an attempt to destroy it. The motherships have a limited amount of energy, which controls how often they can use their special abilities. In a real game, this mothership would now be out of energy and very vulnerable to a counterattack. But since this is our demo, we're going to cheat a little bit here and give this mothership some additional energy. This additional energy will allow our mothership to employ her final ability. The mothership can create a black hole, which is extremely dangerous to enemy flyers. time to bring our full strength to bear. And Taro Tassadar, Commander, carry forth the light of ire. We've shown you some old units with some new abilities, as well as a great many new Protoss weapons. We'd like to leave you today with a look at a battle between the Protoss and the Terrans. This is the first time anybody outside of Blizzard Entertainment has seen these two races engaged in an epic battle in StarCraft II. Nuclear launch detected. 